Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to this course on Advanced SQL or Advanced SQL, if you will, in the summer semester 2020 at the University of Tübingen. Hi there, my name is uh, Thorsten Grust, and normally uh, you know me. Normally I would prefer to stand in person in the classroom and talk to you face to face during this crazy summer semester. This is unfortunately impossible. We have the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and that turns things on its head. Uh, we will have video assisted lectures or video based lectures during the summer semester, at least for the major part of it. Let's see how things progress. But that's what we are coping with. That's what we have to deal with and we will make the best of it. Uh, we will have this video lecture series on advanced SQL uh, posted to YouTube. You can tell that I'm a bloody novice and a bloody beginner when it comes to creating such videos. Please bear with me. I hope that as the semester progresses, things will brighten up. Let's see how that works. As you can see here, I brought the slide set with me, the slide set for this, um, for this lecture. Um, uh, and for the entire course, actually, you can download all of these slides from the from the uh, from the GitHub repository that is associated with this particular lecture. I will point you to the URLs and the required information um, uh, during the course of these uh, of this introductory video, and you will find all the information also in the forum that is associated with the course. Um, you will find all the required material as you need it. Um, advanced SQL, what's that all about? So, um, well, as the name promises, we will dive into aspects of SQL, but not the ordinary uh, stuff, but the advanced aspects of SQL that you will probably not see discussed in the normal textbook or in your normal uh, blog postings or whatsoever. Uh, there are some quite nice aspects to SQL that may be unexpected. And uh, if everything goes well, you go out of this course and you will end the semester with your current mental image of SQL changed a bit. I hope uh, this will happen to you as it happened to me and I see SQL as a different language now, as a much more interesting, powerful, declarative data programming language. And uh, I can hope you can, I hope you can share some of the fun and uh, some of this interest in the SQL language. Uh, the SQL language in itself is interesting enough, but uh, in, in, a, in terms of scientific insight, but there's also a very pragmatical, uh, pragmatic aspect to it. Uh, knowledge and deep knowledge of SQL will earn you, well, will, can probably earn you lots of money in the, in the course of your professional careers. Um, the value of knowing SQL well can hardly be overestimated. SQL is something that this planet bases on and relies on, and knowing SQL well will give you some proper advantage uh, there. Uh, as a proof of that, I have checked the current Stack Overflow developer survey from March 2019. The 2020 version has not been posted yet. Um, as soon as this has been posted, I will update the slides and developers were asked about the most popular technologies that they are using in their daily jobs. And uh, well, you see the bar chart here on this particular slide. SQL makes it to the top third position just after JavaScript and HTML. SQL is the most requested, most popular and most interesting technology that developers uh, uh, see around here. Uh, it trumps Python, it trumps Java, it trumps C, it trumps all of these languages. Knowing SQL can give you quite the edge there. And uh, I think that this course will give you some, uh, some uh, will let you make a giant step forward when it comes to using SQL, knowing about SQL and loving SQL maybe even. So how you see database systems operated out there quite often is in the following fashion. And I give this approach a big thumbs down just to make that clear. In that approach, data resides on in the site, the database systems, uh, in the database table storage 
managed by the database systems, but to perform some computation, to perform any useful computations, developers use very simple SQL queries, something like this, probably the most simple, uh, most simple uh, uh, SQL query that you can imagine, select star from T, to move all the data, to move all the data outside of the database system into the program heap, into RAM, to have the program operate on the data there and then compute the desired result. This approach is really questionable. It moves lots of data. It moves all of this data into, into the heap. This is a portion of the RAM of your system. It may very well be overwhelmed by the size of this particular data. It has to be transformed into a shape that the program can operate on. And then the program does the real work, the real work to, uh, to produce the result. This is this uh, operate database system at the dump down table storage approach move entire tables out of the database systems into the storage of the programming language, count on the programming language to perform the real computation. Uh, the heap of the programming, lang programming language has to hold all that data. If it cannot hold all at once, we have to chunk or partition the data, or we have to stream the data into the heap. That's quite some, uh, quite some effort. And we have to transform the data from the database internal tabular format into some data structure formats that uh, the programming language can deal with to perform some in-heap computation. This is how database systems are operated all too often and uh, it's the common way to operate with database systems and that's sad actually. This course and I would propose a different way to operate with a database system and it's to move your computation close to the data move the computation out of the program into the database systems. You will probably have to use some advanced SQL constructs to do just that. Select star from T will probably, do not, will probably not cut it. We need some advanced SQL constructs. All of these constructs are inside that language are only waiting for us to be, uh, for, only waiting, uh, for us to be exploited. And we will do just that. Complex computation expressed in advanced SQL will be performed close to the data in terms of queries. We will count on the indexes defined on this data. We will count, we will operate on this data in, the, in its native tabular storage format. The query will transform it into a, a hopefully very compact, a very small result and only this very small result. It will be fetched, it will be loaded into the program heap and a very tiny, very tiny, teeny weeny residual program is only left to write to then further process this result data. That's the approach we are, we are proposing in this particular course. It's moving your computation close to the data. And that means we have to express more complex computation using SQL, but we can do that and this course will show you how to do that. Um, we then let the database system operate using these complex queries over the data format it knows best. Uh, we let the database system use its index structures or its cool, very highly tuned algorithms to operate over the data, which may still be in high volume. Then we will produce a result. Maybe it's very, very low volume, maybe very few rows, maybe even a single row that then has been to, to transport it into program language heap and uh, all that's left to do is some lightweight P pro post-processing. That's the approach we are proposing. That's how a database system was meant to be used. And that's what this course is trying to uh, advocate for. SQL is uh, an old language and has been around for some time. It has evolved and grown. It started as a project run at IBM by these two fine folks, Don Chamberlain and Ray Boyce. Don Chamberlain is still around. He's uh, uh, also the originator and one of the developers of other languages. Maybe you know XQuery, the XML query language. Don is behind that. And the other father of SQL is Ray Boyce, who unfortunately died in, at a very young age. You see he died already in 1974. Don and Ray together developed the first bits of SQL. And since then, SQL has developed into a language that's still maintained, that's still progressing and uh, uh, developing today. And um, despite being an old idea, it's something that's very 
very relevant today, as you saw in the Stack Developer Survey Overview. Uh, the development of the language started already in 1972, named Square. Uh, it was then very soon renamed into SQL, the Structured English, English Query Language in 1973. And then uh, I think because of trademark disputes in 1977, it became this uh, abbreviation SQL. And this has stuck as a name since then. You see, calling the name language SQL or SQL are both acceptable. Either you probably both use of these, uh, uh, but probably use both of these names during the course uh, of the semester and uh, use any name you see fit. So the first implementations of SQL are also very, very old. Already in the late 70s, um, there have been the first implementations of SQL by several groups. And um, uh, you see that this is something that has some history and that can be really relied and built upon. Uh, SQL is a standardized language that is under the auspices of the ANSI and ISO committees that uh, care for the language. The language is still being developed. New releases are produced every few years and uh, it has become the de facto query language for relational database data. There is no other language to speak of. It's the intergalactic data speak as Mike Stonebreaker, the father of Ingress and PostgreSQL has termed it. If you want to know about the uh, history of the language um, and its standards, the different standards that have been uh, developed, uh, it started in 1986 when Andy Iso started the first work on the on the SQL language, then termed SQL 86. And you see that the language has gathered quite or has collected quite some features over time. Um, you see that uh, some basic ingredients like integrity constraints that really make up the core of the relational database uh, model have already been added, added in 1989. Then uh, some major revision have been performed to make the language more orthogonal, to make, to make possible to, to, uh, to combine its construct in a really orthogonal fashion. And then in 1999, SQL 3 or SQL 99 has been, uh, has been standardized. And this is really uh, the core change from the point of view of this particular course in the language, because by that point, recursive queries have been added to the language. PL SQL has been added to a language, so programmable SQL has been added to the language. Uh, other data types like arrays have been added to the language. Uh, since 1999, SQL is a, f is a, uh, is a full, data programming language, a very nice declarative programming language. And uh, the recursive part really makes it a fully expressible, fully Turing complete language. Anything can be done in SQL. If everything should be done in SQL is a different question, but we could do everything in, in SQL and we will do a lot with SQL. Later on, XML support has been added. Window functions have been added. We will, we will look at window functions in detail in this particular uh, course. XQuery support has been added, XML support. We will not use that much, if uh, at all, in this particular course. Uh, other keywords have been added. Temporal data has been added. Uh, only recently, in 2016, row pattern matching, JSON support has been added. The language is in movement. SQL is a language that is very much alive and in development, and we can expect the next the next revision of the standard probably in, uh, in the course of the uh, next few years. Implementing SQL has become a real challenge. Uh, the SQL standards are multi-thousand page documents by now. Uh, being a conformant implementation of SQL is really a tough job to achieve. And uh, what you see implemented in the systems out there normally are some, some subsets, some dialects of SQL. In this course, we will use Postgres version 12 to work on these, uh, to work with SQL, uh, PostgreSQL implements a very rich, a very, a very nice dialect, very nice subset of the SQL language of the SQL 2011 language, and um, uh, has everything that we need to express 
complex computation using advanced SQL queries in, this, in the course of this semester. So in this course, we will, of course, uh, introduce you to the advanced querying aspects of, uh, of SQL. You will learn some new constructs that you probably have never used or never knew that they even existed in, in, in SQL. We will also explore the procedural aspects of SQL, the PL SQL aspect of SQL, in which you can do some scripting in SQL in a very, in a very nice and very natural fashion. We will explore, and that's the main point of the lecture, how we can push complex computation into the database systems and have it, ex have it, uh, have it uh, evaluated inside the database systems um, where the data resides and where the data has its native index and uh, storage support. We will also see and try to uh, learn what are the uh, limits of the expressiveness of SQL. Uh, we can do everything in SQL, as I told you, because uh, with SQL 99, we have added recursion to the language. But should we do that? Is it pragmatic? Uh, is it practical to do that? That's also a question that will pull up during the course of the semester. And of course, let's have fun along the way. SQL can be a really cool language. And uh, the application that we will consider uh, during our discussions are really offbeat applications and I promise to never show you and bore you with employee department examples uh, that you normally see in textbooks and in papers and so on. We have other offbeat really cool applications of SQL prepared for you so stay tuned for that. You probably know me by now. I've been uh, uh, a professor of database systems since 12 years already in Tübingen. I've been a professor of database systems before in Munich, in Munich and Klaustal. I have done my promotion. I've maybe done my habilitation in database systems in Constance. And uh, I've been a visiting researcher at IBM where I've worked at IBM DB2. Um, so database systems, database systems all around. I love database systems and the SQL language in particular. And I hope some of this shines through in the course of the following weeks. You can, of course, contact me via email. Uh, you can, of course, contact me via Twitter. I'm a very avid and uh, uh, active Twitter user. Uh, you can, of course, drop by in my office, but please be aware that I might be in home office during this crazy COVID-19 pandemic times. Uh, that's why we do it. Because of the pandemic, we will have uh, no in-class lectures during the summer semester, at least until the Whitson, the Fingston break. Uh, let's see how things progress and then uh, and then develop after that. And maybe we can return to the classroom in the second half of the semester, or maybe in July. Let's see uh, whether this can happen. If it happens, you can see the assigned lecture rooms and lecture time slots for this lecture here in, on the bottom of this slide. For now, unfortunately, these are not further relevant. You're currently looking at the first lecture video of a series of lecture videos I will record for this uh, particular advanced SQL course. I will host these in a particular playlist on YouTube. And when you watch these videos, you will see me walk you through the slides, the slides that you can also download. You will also see me develop, run, and discuss SQL code snippets. Uh, that's, of course, that's uh, what we are trying to do here, to have a practical exposure to SQL and really write and live SQL. So we will run live SQL, uh, PostgreSQL and SQL experiments. That's why I brought my terminal window with me. Here's my terminal window. Let's see uh, what's the current date. It's 16th of April, 1705. Um, uh, that's what you can. Uh, uh, that's what we will do here in the, in the terminal. I of course brought my beloved Sublime Text text editor, where we will author queries and then submit them for execution to PostgreSQL. So that's another thing that we will do during this lecture. Um, if particular pieces of discussion do not fit on slides, or if I have an ad hoc idea of how to present stuff to you, I might or might also turn to just pen and paper and then use this to uh, to discuss further things. Please let me know in the forum whether this is visible and whether you can read this. 
issues of lighting and so on i will try to uh, i will try to improve as the course runs and the videos progress all right these slides all the uh, code fragments for the uh, for the lecture everything that for the course everything that we will uh, uh, um, use in experiments and so on will be downloadable from github you can see the github url here this particular not this particular slide let's just quickly walk there uh, walk over there this is the the repository there you don't see much there yet uh, that's expected we will host content there all the relevant code fragments and slides and everything on github for you to download github is uh, very important because we will also use it to run and organize the weekly assignments and the tutorials we will uh, distribute all these assignments via github so you will use git pull to download the assignments work on them normally from tuesday to tuesday and then git push them back up to us so our awesome student assistants can grade these lectures for you um, you will work on teams in teams of two and how to build these teams how to access github how to push how to pull all of the details all of this will be found in uh, in a posting on uh, the github uh, on the, on the, i'm sorry on the forum for this particular lecture uh, i will show you the all in a in a minute uh, all of this information will be available to you so don't worry now uh, everything will be answered in time uh, answers can also be uh, provided by christian christian duter who is the assistant for this particular lecture you see his email address on this particular slide you also see his room information here um, Christian might also be in home office. Please be aware of that. Uh, sending email might be a best bet. Maybe the best bet, in fact, is using the forum where we'll turn to your questions and try to respond in a timely fashion. Um, we will start with these uh, assignments probably by the end of April, April, when we have collected enough of interesting stuff to really discuss in, the, in assignments. Christian will probably hold interactive live tutorials uh, video conference in a sense in a, in a two-way fashion so that you can an, uh, ask questions have them answered by Christian have them answered by your fellow uh, students we will try to add some interactivity there and once this is decided we will also de announce that in time I've already mentioned the forum which will be a very important hub a very important piece uh, during this summer semester during this crazy summer semester even more than in the earlier in the, in the other semesters um, going to this forum will provide you with uh, uh, the possibility to register for the assignments and to find your fellow students to to build teams of two we will post all important announcement to this particular uh, to the to this particular forum let's go there quickly uh, you will see there's not much there yet all right but there will be uh, all this information I promised will be there in time so that you can uh, participate in the assignments find all the announcements find all the uh, uh, the code samples that we will be using uh, during the lecture during the lecture either you find it on github other ad hoc stuff you may find in the forum uh, you can post of course your own questions you can post your own answers please do not post complete solutions to assignments you know that this is a no-go uh, otherwise code fragments uh, can of course be posted please don't hesitate use the forum use it to communicate it's uh, more important in this semester than ever before you have general discussion there on organizational matters and and you know us as i as i told you already we are normally really quick in responding to your uh, to your questions there's quick turnaround to be had in the evenings even in the uh, in the on the weekends you know us we will monitor the forum closely and make it a lovely uh, a lively place and a lovely place to be we will uh, have an end term exam for this uh, course uh, as of now as of april 20 or the beginning of the semester we are planning to have a written 90 minute written exam on thursday july 23rd whether we can have that of course depends on the then current regulations by university of tübingen let's see how things work out we will know in time uh, please work on the assignments because you need 66% or two thirds of the assignment points to be um, admitted to this end term exam. You will probably score m way more than the 66% of assignment points. 
typically we see rates of like 80 or 90 percent of points uh, uh, scored during the course of the semester and all of these extra points will turn into bonus points that can help to improve your exam uh, grade by the end of the semester. Uh, you know the drill in our lectures. You can bring a double-sided cheat sheet to these exams, but we will uh, remind you of that once time has come. And you can earn six ECTS when you when you uh, pass the assignments and pass the uh, uh, exam in a successful fashion. And I hope you do. So good luck with that already now. Um, we will have a course homepage for this particular advanced SQ SQL course. It's not as important as in the other semesters because all the slides, all the material will be hosted on GitHub, as I told you. But now and then we will make announcements there. Now and then you will find updates to the curriculum or some general news there. So please drop by, surf by regularly and uh, now and then like every week and check there. This is another place of information and another site of information that we will use to um, uh, to be in touch with you. Uh, to be in touch with us, to get in contact with us, please use the forum first. Um, if you really need personal things discussed, please send email first so that we can arrange a meeting or video conference or something, or maybe even an in-person meeting. Who knows how time and regulations progress. There's not a single textbook that we base this course on. There is no advanced SQL textbook actually around. But instead, we will, we will build on a very variety of scientific papers and on some excerpts of books that we found here and there. We have uh, extracted cool use cases, cool questions and cool examples and, and, and sample scenarios from blogs and mailing list postings, for example, from Stack Exchange or Reddit. Of course, the SQL reference and the standard are some source of inspiration and information for this particular lecture. Um, and then there is a particular interesting website run by the Austrian Markus Wienand called Modern SQL, which uh, is really a treasure chest of interesting information on how the language SQL has developed in recent times, uh, what constructs has been added, what you can do with them, how to really exploit them. Uh, so uh, as an additional source of information, in, in addition to what we are discussing in this particular course and the slides and in these videos, uh, maybe it's uh, now and then interesting to surf by modernsql.com and see what Markus Wienand has to say on the modern uses of SQL. There's a, there's a plethora of books on SQL hacks, SQL quizzes, SQL puzzles, SQL anti-patterns, SQL performance peaks, idioms, and so on. Uh, um, when when there is a particular source, particular book that is super interesting to uh, to this lecture, we will of course name them. Otherwise, uh, it's it's the rule of the game that you can that you can uh, bank on the slides, on the forum, and on these videos to draw to extract all the information that you will require to work on the assignments and to work uh, to to pass the exam. All right, so far so good. So much for this introduction to the course Advanced SQL in summer 2020. Uh, we are really looking forward to, uh, to explore SQL to some depth with you. I'm particularly looking forward to that. You can count on that. Uh, and I will talk to you in some shape or form, probably in the term, in the shape of, uh, in the form of a YouTube video in the coming days. See you then. Stay safe and goodbye.